so uh, now we are going to start uh, our next module module number 4 that's called as simplified stamping uh, process or uh, simplified stamping analysis we can say so uh, in this uh, particular module uh, uh, which we'll going to complete now uh, in this session itself so uh, we will see how to do uh, a simplified analysis of a stamping process uh, uh, a stamping process uh, certain things which we have already studied and certain things will be new to us in this particular chapter and uh, already whatever we have studied we will try to put it uh, for the simple uh, simplified uh, stamping analysis okay so what are those uh, assumptions okay how we are going to apply uh, you know whatever we discussed before for uh, this kind of uh, stamping process is what uh, something we need to know so that that complexity involved in stamping analysis can be reduced okay so though it may not be uh, fully accurate we will see that but it will give you a very good idea of what is going to happen in the sheet during stamping process. So, stamping process, what do you mean by stamping process? So, stamping process means, for instance, it could be any sheet deformation process. It could be any sheet deformation process. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, it is of industry component level. Okay. So, suppose you want to make some component, for example, your front bumper, uh, rocket panel, tunnel, okay, B pillar, inner, okay a roof rail inner something is called as sub plate these are all actually stamped products stamped product means actually from industry point of view okay you can make that component by sheet forming okay generally they are of shallow parts which is required depending on the situation okay so it is a stamping is a very conventional process used in industries to make many such components okay uh, which cannot be made by simple bending or folding process okay so, which cannot be made by simple folding or bending process and uh, this stamping process will involve mostly stretching type of you know deformation okay uh, that's what is indicated they used to form shallow parts in the press by stretching the sheet over a shaped punch or die uh, there can be other tools also to create that shape okay so uh, and like your sheet forming process can be divided into uh, you know two important categories depending on the temperature working temperature here also you can call it as hot stamping and cold stamping process hot stamping done at elevated temperature cold stamping done at room temperature depends on the material okay some examples are given here cold stamping is uh, used typically for lightweight materials like aluminum alloys hot stamping is generally used for high strength steels hss or uhss ultra high strength steel seals okay so many uh, examples are given here this kind of components can be made uh, by using uh, let us say different hot stamped automotive parts are shown here similarly cold stamping is also possible so so this this will give you a fair idea of where we stand uh, you, know, you know when you discuss about stamping process so this is the context okay so just to tell uh, very basic tools required for stamping process which is already known to us it is all conventional tools available to us but then uh, it's more of a intricate shape that is required here you can see that uh, this diagram a b and c which are taken from this particular book so you will see that it has got a punch okay and uh, it has got a you know blank or a sheet okay and uh, you will see that uh, uh, there is a blank holder okay and there is a die kept here and there is a draw bead okay on these locations it's a sectional view ah, it's a sectional view you can say the all are there okay so now uh, punch is not touching the sheet here okay there is a gap okay so now punch is going to move out and is actually stretching the sheet okay on its uh, surface so now you keep pushing down some shape will be formed and if you want to have a counter punch counter punch can also be uh, you know pushed from the bottom side okay and it can deform the sheet in this region okay so that if you want to make any re-entrant shape that can be made re-entrant shape means you can see that the sheet is deforming like this and then there is an inward movement of the sheet and then it is coming down and it goes undeformed this kind of re-entrant shapes can be made by uh, with the help of a counter punch okay so punch uh, you have a blank holder you have draw bead and then you have counter punch and of course you need a die okay all together is going to give you this particular shape okay but uh, it is not mandatory that you need to have a die because you can make uh, 
a unshaped component. Unshaped component means the component shape is derived by how much you deform. Okay. So in this case, you can see counter punch can be uh, seen in the form of a die which is going to give you some shape at one particular location. Okay. These are all certain important tools. These tools are known to us. Okay. And uh, I hope you understand the meaning of blank holder. Blank holder is to hold the sheet, which means that uh, this can be done in a double stage stamping process. Double stage means two stages. One is, first of all, this blank holder will come and hold the sheet in this location. Okay. In this location, it's going to hold the sheet and then your punch will come and then it will deform the sheet. And the punch will keep on deforming until that the last phase of the you know deformation, you have to hold the uh, sheet okay blank holder has to hold the sheet otherwise if you don't provide appropriate blank holding force there will be a lot of wrinkling that will happen in the uh, flange of the sheet flange of the sheet is this okay so it's a double stage stamping process so blank holder has to be uh, used to hold the sheet that is number one it will come separately and then punch will come down to deform the sheet in this fashion okay so now if you want to analyze this particular uh, you know process and then uh, calculate certain important uh, quality, okay, the quality of the sheet at different locations, okay, quality when I say how much, you know, strain it can withstand at one particular location, how much, um, you know, thickness it can withstand at one particular location, okay, and then uh, uh, how much is the tension, you know, T1, T2, sigma 1, sigma 2, principal stresses, so all those things, what will be beta, alpha at different location, so all those things can be calculated uh, from whatever we have studied before how we are going to put that into this situation is what we are going to see now. So now we are going to consider something called as a two dimensional stamping model, two dimensional stamping model and uh, a typical uh, schematic is uh, shown in this particular figure. Okay. Schematic of a 2D stamping process is uh, shown here. Okay. There are a lot of uh, you know nomenclature one has to uh, you know indicate uh, with respect to this figure and I have noted down that. Okay, so we'll go one by one. So you will see that so this black color one is the sheet. Okay, this black color one is the sheet. It has got O, A, B, C, D, and then this particular portion is actually zoomed in here. Okay, A, B, C, D, then E, then F, and at the end you have G. Okay, so O, A, B, C, D, E, F, G actually covers okay one half of the sheet metal component or stamped component okay so now here you can see that punch is actually deforming the sheet okay punch is actually deforming the sheet okay and uh, hence you are going to call this height as uh, penetration height or uh, draw depth something like that you can call so you can call it as punch penetration how much height it has deformed the sheet okay so with respect to punch we are going to call this a as punch semi width okay punch semi width so this from center axis to this particular portion is actually your punch, one half of punch. So we call it as a punch semi width, width of punch width, but it is a semi width, A. And then you are going to have this B, B is called as blank semi width. Blank means sheet, sheet semi width, one half of the width you can say. This is B from this axis to this end, this is B. C is a side clearance, C is the side clearance between your punch and the your blank holder or punch and the die you can say. So here you have to be a little bit careful in deciding what is C. Uh, as we discussed before, there should be appropriate uh, clearance between the you know uh, clearance uh, defined by C. Otherwise, what will happen here is uh, uh, lesser the clearance. That means uh, clearance is lesser than the sheet thickness, for example, then you are going to have ironing. We will see that briefly later on. That should not happen. Larger clearance will also create a uh, other uh, you know defects in the material okay so we need to have appropriate clearance that we discussed in the first section so then uh, we have something called as e okay a b c then we are going to call this as e this e is this particular region we call that as a land width okay this basically uh, this e is a region where you don't have any uh, you know compression force or blank holding force that's going to act here okay nothing is acting here okay when compared to F. So when you go to F, that is where you are going to have clamping. Okay. F is nothing but width of a frictional clamping. Okay. That is where you can imagine that there is a, a draw bead. 
okay and it is located here and that's going to give you some clamping force restraining force to the sheet okay or uh, you can have uh, you can imagine that there could be uh, a force equivalent force whatever draw bead force is given an equivalent force can be given at this location uh, which can uh, restrict the movement of sheet okay that all are going to happen at this f okay in this width h is already informed to you and t is a blank thickness okay at any uh, you know location you can pick up okay t and uh, there are three radius rf rp and rd okay so rd is a die corner radius rp is a punch corner radius rf you are going to call that as a face radius there is a small radius okay given to the punch okay there is small radius given to the punch okay so this little shallow in nature you can imagine so that is rf and there are different zones one can define okay one is ob material in contact with the punch uh, from o to b you have contact with the punch and from b to c it's unsupported region that is nothing but your side wall like in deep drawing we say cup wall no so here bc is unsupported region okay that is your cup wall between your die and the end of punch okay and uh, cd cd is actually sheet in contact with the die corner radius so wherever you have contact in this rd that is your cd and uh, your de de is basically sheet on the die land without contact pressure okay so this land width we said no in that location whatever sheet is available you call that as de and ef is a region on which a blank hole force is acting that i already indicated you can call that as let us say b okay and uh, fg is a free edge of the blank okay fg is a free edge on a blank so now it's going to have a uh, since you are going to clamp it with some blank holding force you will see that uh, uh, the sheet is going to stretch okay uh, on the punch surface and you are going to make some component and we are going to call that as a stamping operation and uh, this angle theta is going to be important and this theta is actually referred with respect to this particular region between a and b this is this is basically the the inner angle here okay and this angle is same as that of uh, this particular angle which is subtending with respect to your cup uh, you know your or die uh, or your side wall that is between basically uh, your uh, bc okay between uh, that is along bc this angle uh, both the angles are same theta and theta this fellow and this fellow and uh, b is a blank holding force uh, that is going to act which is what is uh, shown here and uh, you will see that this f is the punch force f is the punch force you know that has to be calculated okay punch force will change with respect to h f is going to change with respect to h there is a typical diagram you can draw f as a, with respect to h okay f is going to change with respect to h so these many details are there in this particular figure and then what we are going to do is we are going to do analysis on this okay so now uh, a usual way we always start with strain of an element so what we are going to do is assuming there is a punch rigid punch okay this punch is given here with this uh, yellow color one and below that uh, you are just picking up a small element in the sheet that is this orange color one and this is your sheet the gray one is actually sheet a part of sheet which is below the uh, you know rigid punch which is actually getting stretched actually getting stamped and there is a small element you are going to pick up okay and uh, uh, that element strains and uh, state of stresses are shown here okay and the directions are shown here so basically along the sheet we are going to call it as one perpendicular to that is three and perpendicular to the plane is actually two we are going to pick up that as two so perpendicular to your sheet perpendicular to your die or the plane of the in a diagram is actually two okay so we are seeing an element deforming and sliding below punch face so this could be uh, uh, anywhere here uh, you can just simply say anywhere here okay in this location or in this location anywhere here okay so what we are saying is basically epsilon 1 okay that is nothing but strain okay a direction on the sectioning plane okay sectioning plane okay so you are going to section this entire setup no so on that plane you are going to have 1 so that is what is given here and epsilon 2 is nothing but beta and epsilon 1 that is known okay that is perpendicular to the principal direction that means uh, perpendicular to the plane uh, of this particular diagram that we are going to call it as a plane strain and that is going to be zero okay so epsilon 2 that means uh, along this two direction we are going to keep that as strain as zero because uh, uh, the material is actually not constrained 
in that direction. Material is actually not constrained in that direction. So, you can imagine that this particular section will remain the sectioning plane. You can cut that entire setup at any location, this situation will remain same. Okay. So, this section is done at any location, this situation, okay. your punch, die, all this situation, your sheet situation should remain same. Okay. So, which means that there is no constraint uh, for uh, the sheet to deform in the two directions. So, you can call that as a perpendicular to principal direction. We are going to call this a 0. This is an important one for us. Okay. And uh, epsilon 3, this we already derived minus of 1 plus beta and epsilon 1. And uh, since beta is actually, uh, you know, 0 here, so you can put minus epsilon 1 that is because of beta is equal to 0. And uh, we already have an assumption sigma 3 as 0. Okay. So, that is what is noted down here. Okay. So, you will see that uh, sigma 1 epsilon 1 will exist sigma 2 will be sigma 1 by 2. Huh? So, if beta is equal to 0, what will be alpha? We will see epsilon 2 as 0. Okay? And uh, you will see that sigma 3 is anyway 0 okay? because we assume plane stress assumption here also and epsilon 3 is already here. Okay? So, this is the situation we have and uh, you know how to get epsilon 1 and epsilon 3. Okay? You assume that in this location a circle grid is plotted like the way we did some problem. Okay, and the circle grid will get uh, deformed after some time until there will be, uh, you know, uh, different, uh, you know, dimensions from that you can get epsilon 1 because of the situations epsilon 3 is nothing but minus epsilon 1. So, it becomes a simple case. Now, if you want to evaluate effective strain in that particular location by assuming 1 minus yield function, we already derived this epsilon bar is nothing but square root of 4 by 3 into 1 plus beta plus beta square outside is epsilon 1 and then uh, if beta is 0, this fellow has become 0. So, then uh, it will be 2 by square root of 3 into epsilon 1. So, epsilon bar also can be found out uh, at that particular location. So, second important thing after strain evaluation and effective strain evaluation is the thickness. Thickness is going to be important because we do not want thickness to reduce beyond a certain limit. Okay? Otherwise, it will lead to instability. Right? Uh, instability like necking, fracture which you will see in the next chapter. Okay. So, thickness, how do you get thickness, the new thickness? Okay. That also can be obtained by original expression, T is equal to T naught exponential epsilon 3 okay. and beta to be equal to 0, it will be directly T naught exponential minus epsilon 1. So, that also can be evaluated. Okay. So, uh, where T naught is your original thickness and epsilon 1, you know how to get it with respect to circle grid measurement. So, now let us come to the state of stress. So, as I already discussed with you, sigma 1 is going to be there and sigma 2 is equal to alpha into sigma, alpha into sigma 1 as per our definition. When beta is equal to 0, alpha is going to be half and hence sigma 2 is nothing but half into sigma 1 which is nothing but sigma 1 by 2 and the sigma 3 is going to be anyway your 0. Okay? So, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, epsilon bar thickness all are found out. So, now we have sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 also. Okay. Now, all are known uh, at that particular element below the punch which is undergoing deformation. Okay. So, now how do you get sigma bar? So, for sigma bar if you want to if you want then you need to go for uh, mean effective stress relationship with effective strain. Okay. And uh, it is given by this particular equation. Okay. Sigma bar is equal to k epsilon naught plus epsilon bar power n where epsilon naught is nothing but your pre-strain value. This we discussed in the, the previous uh, you know, uh, section epsilon naught actually is called as pre-strain and that is going to take care of uh, the prior deformation of the sheet before it comes to the present stage. Okay? So, that is why when you say this strain is 0, there is going to be some sigma uh, bar available uh, in the material which could be equal to your yield stress. Anyway, fine. So, now if sigma bar is equal to k epsilon naught plus epsilon bar power n, okay, then what we need to do is we need to put uh, epsilon bar in this equation. Okay? So, because epsilon naught is a constant, k and n are material constants, okay, uh, epsilon bar is going to change and it is going to change with respect to this particular equation which you already derived, 2 by square root of 3 into epsilon 1, I am going to put here power n, okay, and then sigma bar can be obtained. So, if I know sigma bar, I can get sigma 1 by relationship sigma bar divided by 1 minus alpha plus alpha square from 1 minus effective stress, alpha is equal to half if I put. So, uh, it will be 2 by square root of 3 into sigma bar, 2 by square root of 3 into sigma bar and uh, if sigma 1 is known to me, I can get a sigma 2 and sigma 3 is anyway not available for us here. 
okay so this all are uh, already available for us only thing is depending on the stamping process assuming it to be plain strain and of course plain stress you know uh, sigma 3 as 0 we are going to simplify all such analysis in this way now there is an important point that we are actually changed this equation sigma bar is equal to k epsilon naught plus epsilon bar power n now what is going to happen so now if you want to get t1 and t2 okay t1 and t2 were introduced in the previous section okay where t1 and t2 are nothing but traction force or tension okay like this diagram i think we discussed in the previous class okay in y axis you have t1 t2 x axis let us say epsilon 1 and t1 t2 are going to vary like this and these two are related by alpha these two are related by alpha right and uh, we said in the previous class that whenever maximum tension t1 is going to happen okay then that can be defined by epsilon 1 star okay whenever epsilon 1 becomes epsilon 1 star okay then we say maximum tension is going to happen and uh, i think in the previous uh, section we derived epsilon 1 star is nothing but i think n okay uh, by assuming sigma bar is equal to k epsilon bar power n i think okay so you can refresh that so epsilon 1 star is equal to n we discussed i think okay anyway or uh, we, i think we discussed n by 1 plus beta maybe okay so maybe we will check it so that uh, you can refresh it so epsilon 1 star will be equal to uh, one particular value then maximum tension will happen now uh, uh, but t1 can be found out as nothing but sigma 1 into t uh, where sigma 1 is nothing but sigma bar divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square and sigma bar is nothing but k into epsilon naught plus epsilon bar power n and epsilon bar is nothing but your effective strain this fellow power n you know like t naught exponential minus epsilon 1 this we already derived okay so now uh, when we say beta is equal to 0 and alpha is equal to half this equation can be reduced further uh, which can be written as uh, you know if you say alpha is equal to uh, uh, alpha is equal to 1 by 2 then it will be 2 by square root of 3 okay uh, into k will remain as it is t naught will come here into epsilon naught plus this entire thing will become if you put beta is equal to 0 2 by square root of 3 into epsilon 1 which you already derived power m exponential minus epsilon 1 and uh, in this way you can get t1 and t2 would be t1 by 1 by 2 because alpha is equal to half right so what are the variables here you can see t naught is the original thickness k is the strength coefficient you know how to get it n is a strain hardening exponent which will be given to you pre strain is a very small value let us say 0 0.005 or 0 0.008 so all are known to us only difference is there is going to be epsilon 1 which is a variable okay so now what we are going to do so we are going to obtain epsilon 1 star we are going to obtain epsilon 1 star for this equation okay and the main difference is there is epsilon not here in the previous uh, section we derived an equation for this similar equation for this equation and here we are going to introduce pre strain then if you say by differentiating t1 we obtain maximum tension at a strain epsilon 1 star is equal to n minus root 3 by 2 into epsilon naught n minus root 3 by 2 into epsilon naught if there is no pre strain then this factor will go off that's what i was telling you epsilon 1 star will be equal to your n so when you put beta is equal to 0 here so you will see that epsilon 1 star will be equal to n both will remain same okay so the only addition we have is minus root 3 by 2 into epsilon naught that comes because we are going to include pre strain into this particular strain hardening law okay so and we are going to say that this star generally refers to a limit strain value okay and epsilon 1 star is known to you epsilon 2 star can be obtained by beta into epsilon 1 star providing your beta is going to remain same okay when you reach this particular stage of deformation which may not be true also okay so but assuming that your beta is going to remain same then you can get epsilon 2 star here okay so uh, just considering on element how to get all the principal strains then effective strain principal stresses alpha beta of course and then you have a sigma bar then you can get a t1 and t2 and further if you put this particular condition okay for maximum tension you can get epsilon 1 star that is the major strain principal strain at which maximum tension is reached okay after which you will see a decay in t1 okay and correspondingly t2 so which is actually different that is n minus root 3 by 2 into epsilon naught because you are bringing in epsilon naught into this equation okay so now we are going to the uh, next one 
So we need to get a few more important, uh, uh, you know, uh, quantities required during this deformation. What are they? So we need to get a P. P is nothing but a contact pressure. P is nothing but a contact pressure. Okay, we need to get that. So for this, this particular diagram A to D would be useful. Okay, and this is uh, similar to your previous one. So let us say this is your uh, uh, punch, rigid punch. Let us say, and this is your sheet which is actually sliding on the punch surface and it is getting deformed, let us say, okay. And uh, this is a, uh, an element of arc length, let us say ds, it is given here, okay. So and uh, length of the element, okay, ds is nothing but your d theta into r, uh, where r is your, uh, you know, your radius of curvature of this uh, particular punch. So r into d theta will give you ds, okay. and uh, force acting on the element radially is nothing but uh, you have p r d theta okay this is a p r d theta right r d theta okay and then p r d theta will be nothing but your force acting on radially and here this p is actually called as a contact pressure okay this is nothing but your contact pressure and because of p okay there is going to be one mu p which is going to act towards left because uh, the sheet is actually stretching against it Okay, the sheet is actually stretching, sliding against it. So naturally, mu p will be in the opposite way, and uh, that will give you tangential force due to friction, which is nothing but mu p r d theta, mu p into r d theta. Okay, these both the forces are actually plotted in this particular figure. You will see that this is the same element. Okay, and p r d theta is acting in this way, normal to this, and mu p r d theta is uh, you know in the tangential direction, and you will see that there will be some slight change in thickness from one location to another location which we are going to term as t on one side and t plus delta t on the other side. There is some small change. Okay. And because of that, there will be some change in tension t1 and t1 plus dt1. So t1 is major tension, there will be some change in uh, tension t1 plus dt1 along one direction. This is along one direction. No, This is along one direction. This is three direction. Okay, so all are plotted here. So now what I am going to do is, uh, I am going to plot this particular graph which is also easy to understand. So I am going to arrange all this tension in this way. So uh, my T1 plus uh, DT1 okay, is kept in this way and then uh, this will be my D theta. So that uh, my uh, this one will be T1 D theta. This one will be T1 D theta. Okay. So then what I am going to do is, now I am going to find out the equilibrium of forces in the radial direction. That is. Uh, along this direction, okay, radial direction. So what I am going to do, T1 d theta would be equal to my PR d theta, which is what I am given here. And this will lead to uh, P is equal to T1 by R, P is equal to T1 by R, okay. Or this T1 can also be written as, a, what is T1 for us here? We already discussed this. T1 is nothing but sigma 1 into T, sigma 1 into T. Right, so sigma 1 into t, so sigma 1 divided by r by t, okay. This r by t is actually called as bend ratio. This is going to be important for us, which we will discuss in bending, okay. So we are saying that this contact pressure is inversely proportional to the bend ratio. Contact pressure is going to be inversely proportional to the your bend ratio. That is the first one. So contact pressure, how do you get? If you know sigma 1, if you know r and if you know the, uh, the current thickness, then you can get p. How do you get sigma 1? Sigma 1 at that location can be obtained by one of the methods described here. Sigma 1 we already discussed. Sigma 1 divided by sigma bar divided by square root of this one to sigma 1 by square root of 3. Okay. So in that way you can get a sigma 1. R is basically it depends on the you know your punch dimension. Okay. Uh, and then T is the new thickness you know how to get it. So now if you want to take equilibrium along the sheet then we can write T1 plus dT1 minus T1 would be equal to mu p r d theta. So, t1 plus dt1 minus t1 will be equal to mu p r d theta. So, direction you can check accordingly and uh, you will see that uh, this p r, what is p r? p r is nothing but uh, this uh, p r, uh, uh, yes, p r is nothing but t1. You know? So, p r is nothing but uh, t1. Okay. So, I can directly write d t1 by t1 is nothing but uh, mu d theta. Okay. d t1 by this uh, t1 P R is nothing but mu d theta. Okay. So what does that mean? That means the change in tension between these two points. 
okay these two element these two points no how much is a change in tension between these two points which are actually deforming and sliding below the uh, you know the punch okay that change in tension okay is independent of the curvature and is just a function of coefficient of friction and we are going to call this d theta as angle of wrap okay okay so here pressure actually depends on the bend ratio okay which also depends on the curvature but the change in tension does not depend on the curvature rather it depends only on coefficient of friction and angle of wrap so now this equation not only uh, is useful to relate you know change in tension with respect to some known parameters like mu and uh, mu is uh, coulomb's coefficient of friction that you know okay so you can substitute some values and theta is known you can get this so basically not only is going to give relationship between relationship for evaluating change in tension okay it is also going to give you how to calculate tension t1 if you know tension at another point okay so that's what a small uh, you know derivation is given here if the tension at one point j in the section is known then the tension at some other point let us say can be found by integrating this equation if you integrate it so you will get t1k okay will be t1j exponential mu into angle between those two points j and k okay so where t1j if you know t1j has to be obtained from original equation this one if you know that then you can get t1 another location if you know coefficient of friction and angle between these two points otherwise in another location also you can get this way also provided you know all these values if you do not know the best way is to use this particular relationship but there here you should know what is mu what is the angle uh, between uh, these two points okay so now this is what is going to happen uh, between sheet and the punch okay so now if you go ahead and then go to this particular location okay this particular location where blank holding is going to uh, be applied to play a vital role in sheet deformation so now the question is uh, how is the situation there situation there is actually can be written in this particular way so force equilibrium at the blank holder and punch okay force equilibrium at the blank holder and punch so now a region ef okay we are going to call this region as ef okay you are going to call this region as ef which region is it it is just below the punch this region ef on this region okay your b is going to act right so that region we are going to pick up and we are going to draw uh, you know this okay so sheet is clamped between two flat surfaces and the force is expressed as directly i am going to write so where b is my blank holding force acting from both the directions okay and uh, my material uh, if at all it's going to deform it's going to deform or slide in this way so your uh, mu b is going to act opposite to that to restrict that movement and uh, t1e t1e is a t1 at e point t1 at e point e point is this particular point okay d point is just at this particular point okay so e is here so this is your ef no ef just outside that whatever tension is acting that is your t1e okay t1e okay that t1e if you know then you can calculate blank holding uh, force okay from this expression so i am simply writing t1e is nothing but 2 times of mu b 2 times of mu b okay so uh, and uh, if you see generally between this e and f wherever you are going to have uh, this uh, you know where you know your uh, blank holding force is going to act b is going to act generally it is uh, uh, sensible to uh, keep that as a linear variation that means at e you will have t1e value uh, you will have t1e value and uh, it's going to decay linearly okay at f and at f it's going to become zero okay so what i'm saying is uh, suppose you want to plot t1 okay with respect to ef distance between e and f i'm going to plot t1 then it is sufficiently accurate to assume that this t1 e is going to be or t1 is going to be maximum at this e point and is going to linearly decay and become zero at f okay and uh, this variation is a simple variation you can assume but uh, depending on your draw bead force all those things this uh, variation can change okay so the tension is actually reduced linearly in this fashion okay so now i can get uh, uh, b from this i can get blank holding force uh, from this it's a t1 e divided by 2 mu 
So now I want to get punch force. Okay, punch force is this F. Okay, contact pressure has been obtained. So now I want to get this punch force F. Okay, and this punch force, uh, there are a lot of ways to get it. And then uh, you will see that very simple analysis we can do to get this F. For that, I am going to use this particular figure. This can be understood easily. So it is the uh, O location of the sheet. Then you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G will come in from here to here. And uh, my uh, interest is between B and C, which is nothing but my cup wall region. Okay. So theta B can be obtained from the geometry of the you know deformation. Okay. Uh, then what I am going to do is, so I am going to say that uh, since this is an unsupported region, okay, then since in this unsupported region, so I am going to have T1B acting along this, T1B acting along this, okay, which is going to have an angle of theta B with respect to x-axis so that my vertical component of this is nothing but T1B sin theta B, T1B sin theta B. Okay. So T1B is a tension acting at a point B along the cup wall or the uh, the side wall okay, in this direction. So, which is going to have theta b with horizontal axis and uh, which will give my vertical uh, you know, component as T1b sin theta b and what I am going to do is I am going to equate this f and this and put 2 before twice that of uh, the tension T1b sin theta b because it is uh, taking as a symmetry with respect to the axis. Okay. So, we can get uh, the force per unit width considering both sides of the sheet, we can get it as a f is equal to 2 into T1b sin theta b, where theta b has to be known to you okay, and T1b has to be calculated with the uh, you know, previous expression that we have derived in general for T1. Okay. So, now uh, this uh, all are calculated, I have written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can imagine strain of an element, then you have thickness, then stress on that element then you can say tension or traction force T1, T2 that will lead to this important expression for us and then we have uh, equilibrium of forces in two ways. One is radial direction and on the and along the sheet. Both will give you two important outputs. One is contact pressure, other one is change in tension. If that is known, then you can get a blank holding force okay, by this particular expression and then you can get a punch force by this particular method. Okay, and uh, here you will see that this uh, T1, okay, here this uh, T1 uh, depends on several things, right? So T1 is actually depending on the material, its hardening ability, everything. So you can have material properties K and N coming into picture T1, no? So K uh, N comes into picture, and uh, original thickness of the sheet comes into picture, okay? And uh, pre-strain, if you want, that will come into picture, and uh, your uh, how much amount of deformation you have given that actually changes epsilon 1 okay and hence t1 so okay so your uh, punch force can be plotted okay f can be plotted with respect to uh, change in strain okay f can be plotted with respect to change in strain okay so i'm not going to show that but if you want to calculate it you can calculate it so now just to give you some idea of how this uh, tension distribution over this section is going to be, then this diagram would be useful. Okay, this is the same diagram. I have just taken only the sheet. Okay, the 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 the, the stamped component is from O A B C D E F G. O A is below the uh, punch face, and A B is that uh, your punch corner radius. B C is a side wall. C D is die corner radius. D is the unsupported land width region, E F is a location where Blanc Collin was going to eat and F G is a free end. Okay, so now in this, you will see that this is a point O. Okay, This is your point O here and uh, in this entire section, I am drawing between T1 and a distance, T1 and distance you can say. Okay, Let us call it as yes, T1 and distance yes. So you will see that at particular point O, you have some tension T1 which can be calculated from the previous equation. And at A, there is some slight increase and in the corner, there will be significant increase and B, C, there is a constant value and C, D, it is going to follow similar to what is given in between A and B and it is going to somehow reach almost same as that of this particular point. Then D, E, it is going to remain almost same and E, F situation we already discussed. Okay, 
where E is uh, your T1E and suddenly decrease linearly to 0 at F and Fg is a free end, it will remain 0. Okay. So, now there will be some slight increase in tension okay, because we are going to choose a gently curved punch. Okay. The punch is not, uh, you know, it is not curved uh, significantly, it is gently curved punch and tension is going to increase gradually between this point and this point. That is why I have shown the gradual increase okay, between O and A. Okay, between O and A. Okay, so, now A B is a corner. So, naturally we expect the tension is going to increase significantly. Okay, tension will increase from O to B as the sheet is sliding outward against the opposing friction B to O. Okay, because your sheet is drawn uh, stamped in this way, okay, you can expect uh, okay, your tension to increase between in this corner region. Moreover, it is a corner region, we expect tension to be larger when compared to the other location. Now, what is the situation in B and C, uh, you know, B point and C point will have same tension because it is a side wall, it is unsupported region. Okay. It is uh, to some extent sensible to keep it as a constant value. And uh, if you move from C to D to E, okay, C to D to E is again C D is nothing but uh, the corner region and uh, you, will see to, you will see that uh, it is going to decrease uh, significantly and this point, your D point and this O point, okay your D and O point will remain almost same. Uh, why? Because it is the same angle. Yeah, it is the same angle at which you are actually uh, crossing. Okay. The same angle, okay, theta B and theta is going to be crossed here also. So, assuming that, then we can say that you can say from C to D, it is going to decrease and from D to E, it is going to remain constant because it is again, you know, uh, unsupported region. And from E to F, there will be linear decrease in uh, your uh, tension as per uh, uh, this particular, uh, uh, you know, our discussion E to F. Uh, e to F, it is going to decrease linearly and Fg, it is going to become 0. Okay. So, uh, we have to be a little bit uh, careful. That is why, you know, like uh, in this punch corner region where there is a sudden change in your uh, tension, where there is basically sudden change in your tension. Okay. There is a slight increase because it is a gently curved one. This is a corner, so naturally tension will increase. This is a side wall region, so tension can be made as same between B and C. Okay. And then since it is again a corner, it will slightly uh, decrease okay. and uh, your D and E will have uh, you know, lesser tension as compared to the other locations and naturally it is also sensible to uh, see a tension decreasing up to this point and E f is actually linear decay and after that it is going to remain 0. This is how tension is going to change and uh, if you want to see how strain and thickness distribution is going to change in this cross section, okay, these are all some values given from this particular book, you can look into it. Okay. So, uh, again it is referred with respect to O, A, B, C, D, E okay, up to that and you will see that uh, thickness has got one particular value from O to A, okay, they say it is almost the same thickness and then at the corner region is expected that it is going to decrease okay. and uh, because the tension is going to remain same between B and C, thickness is going to remain same okay. and uh, at D and E, between D and E, since it is a unsupported region, it will not thin down like what it was uh, in this region, so naturally it will increase. Okay, and then you can connect this to this with an increase in thickness and then it will reach E. Suppose if you want to take strain, strain is generally opposite in nature you can see there will be some strain value between O and A okay. and uh, wherever thickness is coming down you see that strain is going to be significantly larger and here it is going to be constant, strain is going to come down. Okay. Why? Because uh, between D and E there will be decay in strain okay. and uh, this fellow will come and join here so to get the E profile. Okay. So, uh, again you need to be a little bit uh, careful in this uh, transition zone between A, B, C, D, okay. A, B, C, D, where uh, your both the corners as well as your side wall region is going to come. Okay. This is where your thickness and strain are going to change. Probably some values are given here for you to note down. And uh, you will see that, so this uh, accuracy of this simple model okay, uh, depends on certain assumptions. Okay. So, now uh, here we have not considered uh, what will happen if sheet because of sheet bending and unbending. Right? Sheet actually bends and unbends at a few different locations, we are not going to consider that. 
and because of that bending there will be strain hardening in the material that also we have not considered ok. So, bending and unbending under tension with tension no because it is stretching ok reduce the sheet thickness which will cause an early failure in the side wall that is why I am saying the side wall is important ok. See the side wall this location no this uh, the, this location is going to be very important because you see that uh, thickness is going to decrease uh, drastically in this location you will see strains are going to be larger. So, we have to be little bit careful and it will cause early failure in the side wall ok because of this bending and unbending ok uh, under tension ok. It is just not uh, uh, your uh, moment it is moment with tension that is actually you know happening here. So, that is why you say bending unbending under tension ok. So, that is going to reduce the sheet thickness because of which you can expect thinning you uh, know more thinning and hence uh, there will be fracture in the side wall. So, you have to be careful in these locations between uh, this corner no your uh, you know die corner punch corner and in between that in the cup wall you have to be a little bit careful ok. So, now this uh, uh, you know brief uh, calculations can be done if there is any stamped component ok. Uh, some typical schematic is given here you can see that of course, this is your uh, you can say your die and uh, this is your black color line is your sheet or blank ok. And, uh, you will see that uh, some dimensions are given here ok. So, these two points points called as D ok. So, distance between that is actually 2 D naught ok. So, uh, two points we are taking on the two extreme uh, locations here and then uh, between uh, the sheet edges you can call it as uh, 2 B naught. And uh, the new position of this after some deformation is actually you will see that it is uh, D dash to D dash which is nothing but 2 D. So, 2 D naught it has become 2 D and 2 B naught has become 2 B. So, now if that is the case you can evaluate stretch ratio or stretching ratio and drawing ratio like this. So, stretching ratio SR is given by your D minus D naught divided by D naught into 100 percentage and drawing ratio is given by your B that is a new uh, your width minus B naught divided by initial value into 100. So, this will give you stretching ratio and drawing ratio which will be useful for some calculation. So, how much of stretching ratio has been obtained when you stamp a component, how much drawing ratio is obtained you can get it from this. This drawing ratio would be useful or draw ratio would be useful in deep drawing also. Okay, we will see that later on in deep drawing also we will see this uh, terms ok. So, before uh, we uh, complete this particular uh, module ok which is a small one let us do one or two problems in this we will give an idea of what is going on. So, the uh, first question is ok. So, uh, a material is uh, deformed in plane strain that is already given here with a major tension of uh, T 1 is given here 340 kilo Newton per meter. The initial thickness of the sheet is let us say 0 0.8 mm and the material is going to follow the strain hardening law sigma bar is equal to 700 epsilon bar power 0 0.22 and k is given in MPA. Okay, so, you need to get major strain epsilon 1 at that particular point or at that particular element you can say. So, uh, uh, straight away what we can say is for plane strain which you have discussed already we, we derived a relationship between T 1 and epsilon 1. We already have that relationship that relationship is given here and uh, since this is uh, sigma bar is equal to k epsilon bar power n. So, epsilon naught is actually pre strain is actually 0 here. So, you will get this particular simple equation T 1 is equal to 2 k T naught by square root of 3 the same equation which we discussed before this equation this one same only 2 k T naught by square root of 3 this fellow will become 0 uh, plus 2 by square root of 3 into epsilon 1 power n because this comes because of plane strain exponential minus epsilon 1. So, same equation is actually used here. So, now what is the question T 1 is given uh, k is given T naught is given, n is given. So, that is all. So, uh, substituting all these values you have to iteratively solve this for which value of epsilon 1 you will get this T 1 ok. Or other words uh, what you can do is like uh, you can uh, change uh, you know all these components on, to, on terms on one side and keep only epsilon on other side you can get uh, this expression. So, 2 by square root of 3 epsilon 1 power n exponential minus epsilon 1 is kept here ok. So, T 1 into square root of 3 divided by 2 k T naught is kept here you can substitute all these values. Uh, so, T 1 is uh, 340 into 10 power 3 uh, square root remains 
k is uh, 700 into 10 power 6 because 700 is a mega Pascal and T naught is 0 0.8 10 power minus 3. So, all are consistent unit you can keep okay and then you can solve this to get 0 0.526. So, now you need to check for which value of epsilon 1 you get 0 0.526. You can take a small value and start you know evaluating it. So, if you put epsilon 1 as 0 0.8 uh, you get 0 0.547 then 0 0.0 this one then 0 0.06 you get 0 0.523 approximately which is same as it of this. So, epsilon 1 would be equal to 0 0.06 is a way you can get a epsilon 1. Okay. So, uh, at that particular point you will get a major strain of 0 0.06 when you get a, when you give a tension of T 1 as 340 kN per meter and it has got initial thickness of 0.8 with this particular strain hardening law. So, that is what you will get. So, now let us go to the next question. Okay, which is a little bit complex. Okay, let us discuss this one by one. So, this is a two dimensional stamping process which is provided to you. It is the same diagram like what we uh, discussed before. We had only one section of this, uh, one part of this, one half of this. Okay, now it is full part is given. Okay, blank holding force is acted. Okay, so everything is given to you. So, this is your punch, black color line is the sheet. So, it is said that uh, situation is given, given as side walls are vertical and face of the punch is flat, everything is given. If the blank holding force B is increased, okay, if you slightly increase the blank holding force, that is the situation. They are asking determine the maximum strain that can be achieved at the central line. That means, this particular, they are calling it as epsilon 1 max. Okay, They are going to call that as epsilon 1 max at the center region Okay, when B is increased. When you increase B slightly, the strain epsilon 1 reaches its maximum. That is the situation. When you increase blank holding force little bit, okay, here, here what you will see that epsilon 1 value is going to be maximum. And then coefficient of friction is 0 0.15 is given and the stress strain law is given as a sigma bar is equal to 600 epsilon bar power 0 0.12. K and N are given in MPA. Now, they are also asking uh, maximum strain as well as what is the blank holding force required to reach this the initial sheet thickness is 0.8. Okay. The same sheet which you have used before. Okay. So, uh, if you use the same thickness 0 0.8 mm. Okay. So, what is the blank holder force that is required to reach this particular strain which you are going to calculate. So, that you give appropriate blank holding force such that strain here will be lesser than this strain. You know, because maximum strain means there is something is going to happen there after that. So, that is the situation. So, what we are going to do is we are going to put this condition which we already derived before. Okay. So, we are going to say that uh, when you apply, when you slightly increase the blank holding force here, okay, the wall tension is going to reach maximum and because of that this epsilon 1 here will reach its maximum and wall tension will reach its maximum means you can put a condition maximum wall tension is when epsilon 1 is equal to n. Why epsilon 1 is equal to n? Epsilon 1 is equal to n is a condition which we got uh, before here. Okay. We say epsilon 1 star is nothing but uh, root 3 uh, n minus root 3 by 2 into epsilon naught. No. So, epsilon naught is anyway not there. Epsilon 1 is equal to n. So, what is the uh, condition? Condition we are going to keep here is when wall tension is going to be maximum, epsilon 1 will also become maximum and that can happen because of any slight change in blank holding force and when it becomes maximum, epsilon 1 will be equal to n. Okay. So, T 1 is going to become T 1 max. The conventional T1 which we have used uh, in the previous equation say for this equation, the previous problem, this is going to become T1 max. Why? Because this epsilon 1 is going to become n equal to n. That is what we have written here as T1 max is equal to 2 k T0 by square root of 3 into 2 by square root of 3 into n power n exponential minus n. In place of epsilon 1 we are keeping n. Okay. So, now what we are going to do is, uh, so this uh, T1 at the center point is given by uh, T1 max, T1 max is uh, at any location, we have not specified anything, T1 max divided by exponential uh, mu into pi by 2, this also we derived. Okay. If you want to know tension at uh, one particular location, you can multiply that with exponential mu into pi by 2, which will give you T1 max divided by exponential mu into pi by 2, mu is this, okay. T1 max divided by exponential of 0 0.15 into pi by 2. And this T1 naught is going to be equal to T1b. Somehow we have to bring in blank holding force into picture. Why? Because we need to calculate this. And for that we are going to use this particular situation. That situation is this situation like this. Your T1 
at this location will be same as that of what you got here. What you got here. Okay. At this particular, so 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 basically, this particular point is what we need because this is where your blank holding force is going to act, no? Between E and F. So this particular point you need. This is same as that of this particular one. So we are going to pick up this particular relationship, saying that T one naught is nothing but T one max divided by exponential zero point one five into pi by two. That will be equal to your T one B. But T one B is a general case. But T one B is actually a general case. Epsilon one is not equal to n there. T one b is a general case, so you will keep this original form of the equation as it is. That's what we are going to do. Okay, you see that. So now T one max is this, two k T naught. Okay, so two. I am going to substitute this here. Okay, so two k T naught divided by exponential zero point one five into pi by two would be close to one point two six six into square root of three. This will remain same. Two by square root of three into what is n? N is zero point two. Power 0.2 exponential minus 0.2. So this entire thing has been written in this way. This fellow will be equal to a general case T1b. That will remain same as our original equation. Which I think by 2k T naught by square root of 3, 2 by square root of epsilon 1 power 0.2 exponential minus epsilon 1. Okay. So all the values are known to us. Okay. Except your epsilon 1, and uh, you can modify this equation in this way. So uh, all uh, known values you can take it on right hand side. All unknown values you can keep, which is nothing but epsilon one. You can keep it on left hand side. You can arrange this. You can do some small calculation in between. And uh, like in the previous problem, you iteratively solve this by giving different epsilon one values. Okay. And finally, you will see that uh, for this particular case, zero point zero zero two epsilon one. If you keep, okay, your uh, this right hand side value is going to be same as that of zero point four six nine. So f one one will be equal to zero point zero two six. Okay, to get uh, this particular situation. Okay, so that's a question. You no, know? determine the maximum strain that can be achieved at the center line. Okay, so you have to have this much amount of strain at the center line. Now for this, how much is a blank holding force? That's the next question. So what I'm going to do now? I'm going to now f one one. I'm going to put it here. Okay, so two uh, into All the k values, uh, k value you can give the thickness you can give uh, divided by 1.26 into root 3. Okay, and I am put 0.026 here, 0.026 here, and I am going to get uh, my uh, T1 naught, which is be equal to T1b, which is nothing but 267 kilo newton. Okay, this one. If this is known to me, then I can get a blank holding force. How? 267 divided by mu b. This equation, no. 267 divided by 2 mu will give me b. Okay, that b is nothing but my blank holding force. Okay, which is what I am getting as 890 newton here. You can check it. The calculation is correct. Okay, so this way one can solve this particular problem. Okay, so this little bit of you need a little bit understand this. So we are going to put this condition to get maximum strain at the center location. Okay, so Uh, same situation does not exist below blank holder, so you are keeping a general form of the equation. So by equating these two, okay, you can get strain, okay, and then you put the strain value, okay, uh, to get uh, your uh, T1 O or T1 B, okay, both are going to same, and then that can be used to get uh, your blank holding force. Okay, so we stop here with this particular section, and then uh, the next session we can start a new module. Thank you.